It has changed Nigeria so much, and you can actually be part of it. Being able to be armed with the knowledge of where you're going, you're going to be able to get there like anybody else can. Two consecutive earthquakes hit Mexico City, and Google Map held a response to emergency crises like this. The hurricane had turned Houston into islands, and the roads were changing constantly. We kept saying, thank God for Google, like, what would we have done? It's really cool that this is helping people to keep doing what they love doing and keep doing what they need to do. Building technology to help people in the real world every day has been core to who we are and what we focused on at Google from the very start. Recent advancements in AI and computer vision have allowed us to dramatically improve long-standing products like Google Maps, and have also made possible brand new products like Google Lens. Let's start with Google Maps. Maps was built to assist everyone, wherever they are in the world. We've mapped over 220 countries and territories and put hundreds of millions of businesses and places on the map. And in doing so, we've given more than a billion people the ability to travel the world with the confidence that they won't get lost along the way. But we're far from done. We've been making maps smarter and more detailed as advancements in AI have accelerated. We're now able to automatically add new addresses, businesses, and buildings that we extract from street view and satellite imagery directly to the map. This is critical in rural areas, in places without formal addresses, and in fast-changing cities like Lagos here, where we've literally changed the face of the map in the last few years. <laughs> Hello, Nigeria. <laughs> we can also tell you if the business you're looking for is open, how busy it is, what the wait time is, and even how long people usually spend there. We can tell you before you leave whether parking is going to be easy or difficult, and we can help you find it. And we can now give you different routes based on your mode of transportation, whether you're riding a motorbike or driving a car. And by understanding how different types of vehicles move at different speeds, we can make more accurate traffic predictions for everyone. But we've only scratched the surface of what maps can do. We originally designed maps to help you understand where you are and to help you get from here to there. But over the past few years, we've seen our users demand more and more of maps. They're bringing us harder and more complex questions about the world around them, and they're trying to get more done. Today, our users aren't just asking for the fastest route to a place. They also want to know what's happening around them, what the new places to try are, and what locals love in their neighborhood. The world is filled with amazing experiences, like cheering for your favorite team at a sports bar, or a night out with friends or family at a cozy neighborhood bistro. We want to make it easy for you to explore and experience more of what the world has to offer. We've been working hard on an updated version of Google Maps that keeps you in the know on what's new and trending in the areas you care about and helps you find the best place for you based on your context and interests. Let me give you a few examples of what this is going to look like with some help from Sophia. First, we're adding a new tab to Maps called For You. It's designed to tell you what you need to know about the neighborhoods you care about, new places that are opening, what's trending now, and personal recommendations. Here, I'm being told about a cafe that just opened in my area. If we scroll down, I see a list of the restaurants that are trending this week. This is super useful because with zero work, Maps is giving me ideas to kick me out of my rut and inspire me to try something new. But how do I know if a place is really right for me? Have you ever had the experience at looking at lots of places, all with four-star ratings? And you're pretty sure there's some you're going to like a lot and others that maybe aren't quite so great, but you're not sure how to tell which ones? We've created a score called Your Match to help you find more places that you'll love. Your Match uses machine learning to combine what Google knows about hundreds of millions of places with the information that I've added restaurants I've rated, cuisines I've liked, and places that I've been to. If you click into the match number, you'll see reasons explaining why it's recommended just for you. It's your personal score for places, and our early testers are telling us that they love it. 
So now you can confidently pick the places that are best for you, whether you're planning ahead or are on the go and need to make a quick decision right now. Thanks so much, Sophia. <laughs> the For You tab and the Your Match score are great examples of how we can help you stay in the know and choose places with confidence. Now, another pain point we often hear from our users is that planning with others can be a real challenge. So we wanted to make it easier to pick a place together. Here's how. Long press on any place to add it to a short list. Now, I'm always up for ramen, but I know my friends have lots of opinions of their own, so I can add some more options to give them some choices. When you've collected enough places that you like, share the list with your friends to get their input too. You can easily share with just a couple of taps on any platform that you prefer. Then, my friends can add more places if they want to, or just vote with one simple click so we can quickly choose a group favorite. So now, instead of copying and pasting a bunch of links and sending text back and forth, decisions can be quick, easy, and fun. This is just a glimpse of some of what's coming to Maps on both Android and iOS later this summer. And we see this as just the beginning of what Maps can do to help you make better decisions on the go and to experience the world in new ways, from your local neighborhood to the far-flung corners of the world. This discovery experience wouldn't be possible without small businesses. Because when we help people discover new places, we're also helping local businesses be discovered by new customers. These are businesses like the bakery in your neighborhood or the barbershop around the corner. These businesses are the fabric of our communities, and we're deeply committed to helping them succeed with Google. Every month, we connect users to businesses nearby more than 9 billion times including over a billion phone calls and three billion direction requests to their stores. In the last few months, we've been adding even more tools for local businesses to communicate and engage with their customers in meaningful ways. You can now see daily posts on events or offers from many of your favorite businesses. And soon, you'll be able to get updates from them in the new For You stream, too. And when you're ready, you can easily book an appointment or place an order with just one click. We're always inspired to see how technology brings opportunities to everyone. The reason we've invested over the last 13 years in mapping every road, every building, and every business is because it matters. When we map the world, communities come alive, and opportunities arise in places we never would have thought possible. And as computing evolves, we're going to keep challenging ourselves to think about new ways that we can help you get things done in the real world. I'd like to invite Aparna to stage to share how we're doing this, both in Google Maps and beyond. The cameras in our smartphones, they connect us to the world around us in a very immediate way. They help us save a moment, capture memories, and communicate. But with advances in AI and computer vision that you heard Sundar talk about, we said, what if the cameras can do more? What if the cameras can help us answer questions? Questions like, where am I going? Or what's that in front of me? Let me paint a familiar picture. You exit the subway. You're already running late for an appointment or a tech company conference. That happens. Uh, and then your, the, your phone says, head south on Market Street. So what do you do? One problem, you have no idea which way is south. So you look down at the phone, you're looking at that blue dot on the map, and you're starting to walk to see if it's moving in the same direction. If it's not, you're turning around. <laughs> We've all been there. So we asked ourselves, well, what if the camera can help us here? Our teams have been working really hard to combine the power of the camera, the computer vision, with street view and maps to reimagine walking navigation. So here's how it could look like in Google Maps. Let's take a look. You open the camera. You instantly, you instantly know where you are. No futzing with the phone. You, you, all the information on the map, the street names, the directions, right there in front of you. Notice that you also see the map, so that way you stay oriented. Uh, you can start to see nearby places, so you see what's around you. And just for fun, our team's been playing with an idea of adding a helpful guide. 
like that there. So that it can show you the way. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> Pretty cool. Now, enabling these kinds of experiences, though, GPS alone doesn't cut it. So that's why we've been working on what we call VPS, Visual Positioning System, that can estimate precise positioning and orientation. One, one way to think about the key insight here is, just like you and I, when we are in an unfamiliar place, you're looking for visual landmarks. You're looking for the storefront, the building facades, et cetera. And it's the same idea. VPS uses the visual features in the environment to do the same. So that way, we help you figure out exactly where you are and get you exactly where you need to go. Pretty cool. So that's an example how, how we are using the camera to help you in maps.